to study to show yourself approved as unto the Lord. You know, so you're going to have to study. You're going to have to do your due diligence. But at the end of the day, you just really just trust and believe God. That's the same same way at the job, same way at the ball field, same way sitting down watching TV. You, just, you know, just do what the Lord would have you to do and keep it moving. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, let's get into the Word tonight. Amen. We're going to have to we're going to have to speak fast. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, Jesus, we just thank you for your holy written Word. We thank you, Father, that the interest of your Word gives us life and gives understanding even unto the simple. Father, I thank you right now that you will begin to use my, my lips. You begin to flow through my mind. You begin to form the words in my mouth, the things that are acceptable and pleasing unto you to bring glory unto your holy name, Father. And I pray everyone, every person on the sound of my voice, whatever their need is, whether it's financial, whether it's physical, whether it's mental, whatever their need is, Father, I pray that it be met right now. As you, min- as, as you minister to me, the Word of God, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Father, that it's done even right now. Amen. All right, praise God. So, uh, tonight we're going to be talking about, um, the title of tonight's message is Power Steering Through the Devil's Curves of Life. You know, there's a lot of times where, you know, you know I'll, I'll say that again, Power Steering through the devil's curves in life. Amen? Because, see, sometimes you need some help to get through some of the devil's curves. And it's going to take some power to do that. Amen? You know, I, I, I used to, when I first started driving, I used to have a 1973 Pontiac Catalina. And that was a rather large car. It was a four-door. It had a 400 motor in it. Um, and it had a uh, it had a nice little bit of power to it. And it also had power steering. And the reason why I know that it had power steering is because one day the power steering stopped working. That's how you know when your car has power steering when it stops working. And if you've ever tried to turn a big boat like that thing you were without any power steering, you just, you, you don't run into something. You know, you the car actually literally has to be moving in order for you to turn the wheel. I mean, you got to be a heck of a person, but you know, you got to stand up, stop turning that thing. I mean, it's really, really, really hard. And uh, so that gives me that I understand what power steering is. I understand that it it assists you. It does not power steering does not turn the wheel, but it will help you to turn the wheel. Amen. And it's always better with help than without. Amen? So, we're talking about power steering through the devil's curves of life. Because the devil's going to throw things your way. He's going to bring things in your life. He's going to, he's going to, you know, put things in your path that you're going to need to come over and go through and demolish. And the way that that's going to happen is only through the power that's through the Word of God. Amen? Because without the Lord... We are no match for the devil. Did you know that? You are. You in and of yourself, as smart as you are, as many degrees as you have, as handsome or as beautiful as you may be, you are no match for the devil without the Holy Ghost helping you. Amen? And so we need the, we need the Holy Spirit. And so um, I want to just put a couple of key points on you tonight. Um, I want to tell you this, that without the power of God's Word, you have no effect in life. No word, no power. Little word, little power. Amen? So we need to desire to know and meditate upon the things of God so that we can we can have the power that's available to us through His holy written word. Uh, Ephesians 3.20 It says, Now unto Him that is able to do it exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask to think according to the power that works in us. Amen? We're talking. We're going to talk more definitely about uh, renewing our mind. Renewing our mind. We're talking about mind renewal. Satan wants to get you derailed, and the way that he gets you off course is start stuff in your mind. That's how he gets you off course in the things of God is in your mind. His point of attack is the mind. If Satan can control your thoughts, then he can control your words. 
If He can control your words, He can control your actions. If He can control your actions, He can then control your life. Amen? So let's look at 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. Turn over there. 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. We're talking about power still through the devil's courage in life. Talking about renewing our minds. Second Corinthians four and four. Let's go up to. Let's start with one. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. But we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on to them. It says the God of this world. Who is the God of this world? Satan is the God of this world. We say, well, isn't God the God of all creation? Yes, he is. But you know, when Adam committed high treason, and he signed over the lease to this earth system, he became the God of this world. Adam was the God of this world until he did that. Well, that's why Jesus had to come. He had to redeem us from all of that. Because Satan had to set us up for a poor fall. Because he got to Adam. But you know, Jesus came and he redeemed us from all of that. Amen? But see, Satan still is the God of this, God of this earth system. He's not your God because you have renounced him and you have confessed Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. He's not your God. He doesn't lord over you. But he still has control in this earth system. And as we take control as the body of Christ in our personal lives and collectively, universally, then we take back the authority that he has in the earth. Amen? All right, so it says, In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe, which believe not. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Satan has blinded the minds of those who would believe. Let's turn over to Philippians, the fourth chapter, the eighth verse. So what are we supposed to be doing? Let's look at what we are supposed to be doing with our mind. Philippians 4 and 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Joshua 1 and 8. We know this scripture. A lot of us have just quote it right off the hip, right off the cuff, but, you know, faith comes. By hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah. And we're not to let the word of God survive. Joshua is behind the new line. Amen. We should be stuck together right here. Hey, first. This book of the law should not depart out of thy mouth, but thou should meditate therein day and night. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. This, these two scriptures are the template for your and my thought life. If you continue to meditate on the Word of God, if you continue to keep the Word of God before your eyes, and then, in conjunction with that, speak the word of God. Then you are molding your thought life around the word of God. 
You want, that's what you want to do. That's why the Lord told us to meditate His Word day and night. The Bible has much to say about what we, what we put our minds on. Proverbs 4 and 20. Read this real quickly. Proverbs 4 and 23 24. My son, attend to my words, incline thy ears unto my saying. Let them not depart from thy eyes, keep them in the midst of thy heart. For they are life to those that find them, and health to all of their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. The key to your success in life is found in what we continually meditate upon. What you continually, consistently are putting in your mind, whether it be through words or whether it be some visual stimuli or whatever the case may be, whether you're watching TV or listening to tapes or CDs, whatever you continually putting in your mind, that is what is going to direct your life. The fortress of your mind, your mind is like a fortress. The fortress of your mind is under constant attack from the devil. All the time. All the time. Things are coming to you. You know, you watch CNN. All oh, 30 people got killed in a, bu- a bomb. You know, you know, somebody blew up a train. You know, somebody, you know, stole all the money out of his bank. You know, all oh, there's, 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 somebody just ran into a school and shot up all the children. You know, I mean, all these negative stimulus is coming at us all the time. You know, all the economy is failing. You know, all this president's going back with the You know, all these negative stimuli is coming at you all the time, all the time. What is our challenge is, as the body of Christ? Not to let those things dominate you in your thought life. What are we to allow ourselves to be thinking of? Well, we go right back to what um, Joshua 1 and 8 says, that we're to meditate day and night upon the Word of God. Yeah, if you, want, you want to be up on current events, you know, you want to know if it's going to rain, you know, tomorrow morning or whatever. You want to know if, you know, um, you should go to McDonald's, you know, whether or not they're going to, you know, the beef is going bad or something like that. You need to be have current events, you know. You don't want to just roll up to McDonald's and you don't want to be like, huh. Hmm, I'm going to pick the right time to go. No, you, you just got an important news flag. Okay, everybody. Yeah. You know, you just got people behind the counter like. You don't order anything. Say what? You know, you, you know, because you had your head in the Bible so much, you know, you, you know, earthly good now. You know, you don't want to, you don't want to be so, you know, on top of the Bible that you forget your earthly part here. You know, we we are a spirit. We have a soul, and we live in a body. But you know, we live here on planet Earth. So you need to make current event things too, everybody. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna know something's wrong with McDonald's. And McDonald's don't call me. All right, I didn't say anything was wrong with y'all too. Amen. All right. Um, but the, the, the fortress of your mind is on a constant attack from the enemy. Amen? Your mind holds your thoughts, and your mouth relays your thoughts. <clears throat> and your mouth holds the key to your heart. You know, because see, you speak words, and those words form in your heart. But before you speak, you got to form the thoughts in your mind. Okay? What is being spiritually minded? First John 2 16. We want to be spiritually minded, amen? So we know how to talk. First John 2 and 16. First John 2 and 16. 
Love not the world. Let's just start the fifteen first. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. These three things you gotta watch out for. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. You want to watch out for these three things because they will they will try to rob your your thought life. What they because they'll try to infiltrate your thought life in such a way to get you thinking in that direction. Let's let's kind of hone in a little bit on what these three things are. The lust of the flesh is like fornication. Anything that requires your body to do it. Okay? The lust of the eyes, your imagination. You have to be careful about this particular one here. You know, the lust of the flesh, you already know it. If you've already committed your body to it, you, you pretty much know it. You know, you just don't be like, oh, how did I get here? You know, you, you knew. But anyway, the lust of the eyes, that's your imagination. Mentally, you fill in the blank, you know. Now, men, men, God has blessed men with such a great imagination at times. And, and it can be really good, it can be really bad, your imagination. You know, you meet an individual of opposite sex, and they're fully clothed. You see them, they're fully clothed. Hey, how you doing? And your imagination can go somewhere it ain't got a minute going. You'd be like, I saw her fully dressed, and now my mind is saying she's not dressed. No mind, we can't think like that. I hope that's not too too, too plain for you. But we gotta put it on. The, we gotta put the rug on the road. Some people, you know, watching by internet, they don't know what you're talking about. You're like, oh, Lord, 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 Lord. you know. But your imagination, mentally, you're filling in the blanks that must of the eye. You want to watch that. You don't want to let your mind fill in those blanks in such a way that it's not going to honor your Lord and Savior. Amen? So that's why we go back to Corinthians 4 and 18. What sort of things are lovely? What sort of things are pure? What sort of things are of a good report? What sort of things are just? Think on these things. These things. That's what you've got to think of. That's how you that's how you recapture your mind. Because you've got to have that word down on the inside of you. So it'll harness you and pull you back in. Pull it'll pull you in. Like a horse on rain. You know. Because your flesh, it'll get out of control on you before you know it. And you you galloping a hundred miles in the wrong direction. And you need to pull that boy back in. Whoa. Amen. And that's what the word does for you if you allow it in your life and in your heart. Amen. Lust of the eyes, your imagination. Let's look at the third one, the pride of life. Anything that puffs you up, charges your ego. You know, pride is, a, is, is another one, too, you have to watch out for. You know, because it's, 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 you know, you can subtly, easily get slipped off in the pride. You know, because, you know, people will admire something that you you you're you're doing or you know you gave a great report or you know the you you know your department you're the department head and you know you have an idea to save the company money and you know everybody's just patting you on the back oh you just yeah you know you're so intelligent you know how'd you come up with that you know I would have thought of that in a million years and this that and the other and right there is your opportunity to go in one of two directions. You can say, well you know I'm just you know I'm just very educated and, you know, nobody can do it like me, you know. And you can get yourself all puffed up real quick. Or you can defer to the one who gave you the idea. Say, well, you know, 
I just thank the Lord because, you know, I, 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 I didn't know anything about that, how to fix that particular thing or that way we were doing things. And, and the Lord just spoke to me and I just, I just gave that, you know. And, and therein you give God the praise. And you open up the door for more and more and more for the Lord to be for you and through you when you defer to Him. And you put aside this part of life. Because that's something that the devil is going to try to use to be cool you. Amen? Have you ever met a person that thought they were cute? You know, they just, you know, and I'm not saying whether they were or were not. They just thought they were cute. You know, it was good to have a good positive, you know, mental attitude type stuff. But, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Case in point. I told a lady that I see, I see on a fairly regular basis that I, I said, you know, I saw her and I said, hey, you look nice today. And her response was, today. Now you, now you got me out there where, you know, I've got to fix this because this is my fault now because I just gave you a compliment. You know, so I, 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 now you got to get me where I, I, I I've got a lie now to say you look nice every day because, you know, in actuality, you don't look nice every day. Sometimes you look kind of tall on the floor. But, but you look nice today like you usual, you know. And I'm sitting there thinking, okay. And, <laughs> and so as I'm, as I'm trying to fix this, you know, as, as if I should have to fix anything, you know, if I give you a compliment, it's just, well, thank you, you know, and be gracious. You know, I'm just thinking, you know, that, that's the, that, that was how I was figuring that the end of that conversation was going to go. Well, I had to fix my compliment to you. You know, you give somebody a compliment, now you got to fix it up some more. You know, go figure, right? You know, but, you know, you meet all kinds of folks, you know. And she's one of those folks that thought she was cute, you know. Right? Okay. <laughs> but anyway... And uh, so I said, she said, well, you know, something to the effect that I look in the mirror every day, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, then she'd come out with this spiritual thing. And, you know, I'm a Proverbs 31 woman. And I'm like, if you knew what was in Proverbs 31, you wouldn't have said that. You know, I said, I said, well, I said, well, don't get, don't get too high on yourself now, you know. I'm just trying to, trying to get her to reel herself in because she's like, you know, really out there. And I'm like, you know, and she threw that out there. I'm a Proverbs 31 woman. I'm like, you are so not a Proverbs 31 woman. So first of all, I would have to fix my compliment to you if you were a Proverbs 31 woman, you know. You know, but go figure, right? You know, but you need all kinds of folks. But that kind of, kind of brings in, you know, what, what we're talking about. The pride of life, you know, get lifted up in pride, you know, like you, you know, like you know, you're somebody super great, you know, you know, you're supposed to bow down when you tell me I look nice today. <laughs> but anyway, it's real easy to locate yourself spiritually by how much time or what percentage of your thought life you allow yourself to be sidetracked by earthly or carnal endeavors. So here's how you. Here's how you, you check yourself. So we want to we want to be able to gauge ourselves and, and say, okay, well, you know, you know, we all need work. We all I'm right there with you. And we've all got areas we need to work on. And of course, you know, we are so inundated with every kind of thing that you know, visual or audio, you know, all types of things come at you all the time. You know, to try to get your mind off on some tangent somewhere thinking on something you haven't been mistaken on. So here's how you gauge yourself, you know, to, you know, probably your progress on moving towards more Christ likeness. Amen. That's what we want. We want to be more like Christ, amen. In our thought life and in our regular living. Amen. Many Christians would rank a lot lower on the maturity scale than they think. But it's easy to locate spiritually, yourself spiritually, by how much time, I repeat, by how much time 
or what the city of your thought life, you allow yourself to be sidetracked by earthly carnal endeavor. That's how you get yourself. You know, if you're spending half the day thinking about sports illustrating and the half the other half, thinking about, you know, doing something for the Lord, well, you know, it's not terrible, you know, but most people don't even do that. You know, you know most, most, most people, you know, and I, I guess I'm speaking to most people now, but a lot of people that I know that are Christians don't spend half their day thinking about Jesus. But, but the good news is you got plenty of room for improvement. Amen? Amen? Praise God. You got plenty of room for improvement. Amen? That includes myself. So don't get it twisted. You know, I'm not the poster child for spiritual maturity. No. <laughs> I've got a lot of these same spiritual standards myself. You know, so I'm not coming at you from this you know, high lofty level like, you know, you need you got to be thinking about Jesus like I do. I do. 75% of the day, I think about Jesus. I'm thinking about Jesus right now. Well, of course you are. You preach it. You know? I've never been, I think about Jesus while you preach it. You know? But we said all that to say this. We want to increase our our our, our thought life. We want to we want to guard our mind. We want to guard what we're what we're thinking on, and we want to make sure that spiritually we're in tune with the things of God. Because see, this thing is wrapping up, and people are are coming and going and dying on our left and right all the time, and we're not spiritually tuned in to know what we should be doing, or or, or should, should we be ministering to this person? Should we, you know, we see them in, in line and McDonald's as they get ready to buy that. You know, and you know, you have a word from the Lord, you know, don't buy that person out here. You know, you could have just blessed that person for me. You know, or better yet, you just buy the person big bag or whatever. You know. But be sensitive to the leading of the Spirit of God, amen? And the way you do that is by staying focused on His Word and letting the Word constantly resonate on the inside of you. Number one, putting the Word on the inside of you so there'll be something to draw from, amen? Because you can't, you can't draw from something that's not there. Amen. You don't stick a bucket down into an empty well and expect to come up with a bucket of water. Amen. So there's got to be something in there. Amen. So you want to put the word of God on the inside of you, and then meditate and speak those things out of the word of God, and then that will help control your thought life. Amen. Amen. Did anybody get anything out of that? Amen. Praise God. Stay in your feet. Thank you.